Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Convertible bond sale gain and rate of return calculations. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. We have the information on the left hand side. Going to populate that into the blue area on the right hand side. Looking into our convertible bonds once again. Those being bonds that have a conversion option into some number of shares. We're going to think about a situation of uh, selling the bond at a future point in time, calculated the gain on it and the re rate of return at that point. Information left hand side says convertible bonds outstanding. The rate is 10%. The conversion ratio, how many stocks then could be converted into for a bond? That 55 common stock price, meaning if we convert it into the common stock at this point in time, the price at $20, they mature in 14 years. Conversion premium, meaning the amount over and above the conversion value to get to the bond price is 71. And then we're going to assume we buy one bond and sell it in one year. The par value is going to be 1000 common stock price at that one year point. One year later, it's going to be 27 as opposed to when we purchased it at the common stock price would be 20 then. And the conversion premium at the point of sale 16 as opposed to 71. All right, let's do this. We're going to say the conversion value at the purchase price is going to then be because we're trying we're trying to find basically the bond price. So I'm going to calculate the conversion value and then use our conversion premium to get to the bond price. So we'll say, all right, the conversion value is going to be the conversion ratio of fifty five dollars or fifty five shares that we could convert to times the market price of the shares, which we say is 20 at this point in time underlining that by going to the font group and underline that's going to be our conversion value which is equal to 55 times 20 so if we were to convert the stocks that's what the value would be of the stocks at the point in time of basically the purchase that's going to be the one 1100 and then what's the bond selling for the conversion premium represents the amount over and above the conversion value which is the bond price so if and note that you might often see the problem or think of the conversion premium calculation which would be the bond price minus the conversion value but if they give us of course the conversion premium then we can use that to get to the bond price by and you can just use your algebra but you don't you don't want to memorize two different formulas you probably want to memorize the formula for the conversion premium and then back into the bond price using basically your algebra we got the 71 here so that's going to give us the bond price at the purchase price, 1,100 times the 71. Underlining that font group and underline, we got the 78. Hold on a second. Let's do that one more time. We've got to add those together, not multiply them. Trusty sum function. There we go. That looks better. 1,171. Now we're going to consider the point in time that uh, we sell the bonds we want to recalculate the conversion value so that we can get to the bond price basically the sales price that we have so we're going to do the conversion premium a year later which is going to be then the same conversion uh, ratio which is going to be the 55 meaning we could still convert them into 55 shares but now the market price has now changed to 27 from where they were before at the 20 underlining that font group and underline that's going to give us our conversion value which would be equal to the 55 shares now valued at 27 and then we're going to calculate the bond price because they gave us the new conversion premium and that by definition is the amount over and above the conversion value to get to the bond price so we got the conversion value at the 1485 the conversion premium at the 16 underline in the 16 font group and underline that gives us the new bond price bond price which is going to be now equal to adding these up don't multiply them like i did last time because that would be wrong that would be the wrong thing to do so there we have the 1501 so we're assuming that's what we're going to sell the bonds for but we also got some income from this because we held on to them for a year, we're going to get interest for a year on it. I'm going to recalculate it here. I already got the calculation. It's going to be the par value. Par value of the 1000 And then we had interest on the bond that we held on to for a year at the 10%. So 10% 
let's pick up the rate. The name is the rate. Percent is going to be the 10%, which is, not, if not percentified for you, number group percentify it. Then that's going to be the interest earned, which is going to be the 1,000 times the 10% or the $100 interest. So what's going to be our total return then after this year? We sold the bond and we got that $100 of interest. So we have the sale bond price, the sale on the bond price, which we said we're going to sell it for $1,501. We're going to sell the bond. Note we didn't convert the bond to the common stock. We just held on to it for a year, even though it had that conversion option. And now we're basically selling it. So then we're going to say we also got the $100 for the earned uh, interest income. So that's going to be the $100. So we got that in the year as well. Let's underline that font troop and underline that's going to be our inflow we'll call it and that's going to be equal to the sum of the 1501 and the 100 let's indent that just for the fun of it alignment and indent and then we've got the purchase we're going to compare that to the purchase price the purchase price bond which was we calculated the purchase bond price to be the 1000 171 let's underline that font group and underline and that's going to give us our gain so the gain then is going to be equal to the 1601 minus the 1171 so there is our gain including the interest and the sales so we're not breaking out like obviously for taxes we'd have two different things here you'd got the interest income and possibly capital gains or something possibly different there but we're just looking at overall gain with regards to our return and then we've got the sale of the, we're going to compare that to the uh, purchase price, the purchase price, which is the 117, uh, 1171 to get our rate of return, underlining that number, giving us the rate of return, the return rate, the ROI rate. rate okay, so that's going to be equal to the 430 divided by the 1171, percentifying that by going to the number group, percentifying it at a couple decimals, we're looking 37.72.